Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to make an aircraft in Autodesk Fusion 360. So hopefully you've been able to take the knowledge from the past three tutorial sessions and you've been able to understand what's going on, you've been able to follow along, you've been able to make the fuselage and the wings. And if you've had any problems so far, I highly recommend you just drop it down in the comments below so I can help you out. If you've had a problem, chances are there might be other people who might have a similar problem so it can help them out as well. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to be focusing on the empennot section. So that's going to be your horizontal and your vertical stabilizers at the back of the aircraft. So in my opinion, the hardest bit of this tutorial is already done. So the wings and the fuselage were the hardest bits. Now, the, the empennot is going to be made in a pretty similar fashion to the wings. Uh, but it's going to be slightly easier because you've done it once. And if you did it once and you got it correct, uh, you can pretty much repeat the same process and get away with uh, doing the empennage as well. So if you already have the airfoil section that you want for the horizontal stabilizer, what I recommend you do at this point is just import your airfoil as a canvas, similar to how, what we did for the wing, and sketch out your airfoil and uh, use that as your cross-section. Uh, again, for the simplicity of this video, I'm not going to import anything. I'm going to just follow along this path of the airfoil section. Okay, so I'm going to go to sketch and what I've done is I've just created a new sketch on the right plane. So again, that's the line of symmetry. And what I want to do is create spline, control spline. I'm just going to roughly follow what this airfoil looks like at the back. Okay, and then we're going to iterate until we have something that looks decent. Okay, so there we go. And again, you can't really see the top surface of this airfoil, so I'm just going to do a guesstimation uh, of what this may look like. So I'm going to leave it there and maybe just hop on to that. Okay. Um, and the reason why you can't see the top surface is because uh, this elevator is, uh, sorry, this uh, horizontal stabilizer is actually at an elevation. So it's, again, it has a dihedral similar to the dihedral that we had for the wings. Okay, so that's going to be my airfoil section. Now to make sure that it's actually the correct location, I'm going to go to the top view. And you can see that the back bit is pretty spot on, whereas the one in the front isn't. And the reason why, um, you know, even though it looks correct on the right hand side, but not on the top is because we drew this on the center plane. Whereas in this drawing on the right hand side, the, the horizontal stabilizer actually starts from the end of the fuselage rather than from the middle of the fuselage. So it makes sense that our, fuse our um, airfoil is a little bit short over here. So what I can do is I can just extend this line a little bit over here and adjust some of the points from here. And that's why it's very easy to use the control spline method because you can edit it very, very easily. And I think that looks better for me, so I'm going to leave it at that. What I also want to do is draw a chord line. So again, I'm going to take this line over here and just join it to the end. Perfect. Okay, so I'm done with this airfoil section, so I'm going to finish sketch. And again, similar to what we did for the wing, we are going to create a new plane at an inclination, uh, trying to follow closely to what the horizontal stabilizer is doing at an angle. So I'm going to construct a new plane at an angle, and I'm going to use that chord as my reference point. And again, if you know what your dihedral angle is for the horizontal stabilizer, you can go ahead and enter this value. For me, I'm going to try and guessing it visually. So again, I'm going to first start off with minus five degrees. Um, and if uh, we need to edit it later on, of course, we can just go back in time and edit the value without having to edit anything else. So I'm going to press OK. And again, similar to what we did for the wing, I'm going to create a new sketch on top of this new plane that we've just made. And before we sketch anything here, I want to project my chord line from my airfoil section. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to create a new line and I'm going to snap it onto the trailing edge of the airfoil we created. And I'm just gonna follow what the stabilizer is doing there. And similar to that, I'm also gonna snap it onto 
this one and I'm going to follow what, what it's doing there. So, so that the sweep is successful and it does it neat, what I do recommend is making sure that you first connect this dot onto the white dot and just move it towards the right. And what this does is it creates this turquoise line that's indicating that it's at the same level as where our earlier point is. So if I just click there, you can now see that if I draw a horizontal line from here to here, it's going to match. It just makes uh, things a little bit easier for Fusion to f execute the function well. So obviously over here, you can see that there's a bit of a mismatch. And what, if you want to make this more accurate, what you can do is finish the sketch, go back in time and edit the sketch that you made for the airfoil and just extend it even more. Uh, I'm happy with this, so I'm actually just going to leave it as it is. Um, but obviously, if you know what your sweep angle is, if you know what your dihedral angle is, I do recommend you follow closely to what your design is. Okay, so once we're done with this, again, following closely to what we did with the wing, I'm going to go to Create and Sweep. And I'm going to select the profile as this and this one. And again, we want to make sure that this is on Path Plus Guide Rail. And I'm going to choose this one as the path and this one as the guide rail. Perfect. Now, if we look at the top view, you can see that there's a bit of, an, uh, there's a, bit of a problem at the end. Um, if you just change the extent from perpendicular to path to full extent, you'll see that it fixes the problem very easily. Okay, and again, instead of saying cut, we want to say new body. And I'm going to press OK. And now if we just uh, roll around, you can see that we have a pretty good stabilizer. Okay, so let's check whether our dihedral angle was correct. And again, you can see similar to the wing, this was a good approximation, um, but we can do better by increasing the angle of the plane. So again, instead of changing everything and restarting everything, Fusion has this great capability of going back in time. So I'm going to go to this one. Um, so this part in the timeline where we made the plane. So I'm just going to double click on this. And you can see that this is where we entered the value of minus five. So instead of saying minus five, let's try minus six. And there we go. So this looks much better already. So minus six is closely following what the horizontal stabilizer is doing. So let's try minus 6.5 maybe. And that looks even better. Okay, perfect. So I think minus 6.5 is a good value to go for over here. Again, depending on your model, depending on your aircraft and your blueprints, these values might be different. Okay, so we have a horizontal stabilizer. Awesome, so what we'll focus on now is the vertical stabilizer. So the vertical stabilizer is also pretty similar to both the wing and the horizontal stabilizer that we just worked on. In my opinion, it's actually a little bit easier. Okay, so we know that a vertical stabilizer usually has a symmetrical airfoil. Again, if you know what airfoil you are going to use, Make sure you import that as a canvas and use that instead. I'm just going to be roughly following the path of the airfoil that you can see on the top. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a new plane somewhere around here where my mouse is. And what that will do is it will also take into account this gradient and that gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new sketch on the right plane and I'm just going to be working with lines. So I'm going to create a new line over here and I'm going to draw a line from there to there and I'm going to draw a line from here to here. So here to here. Again, this is just a rough sort of guideline as to where our airfoil should end up. Then I'm going to grab a new new line, going to go to that dot that we created from there and go all the way to here. And you'll see why I'm doing this. I'm going to press the trim tool and I'm just going to trim this, this and this. And we can turn this into a construction line if we want, because we don't really need that line as part of a sketch. We just need that for reference. OK, I am going to now finish the sketch. And what this line is basically representing is this is going to be our chord of the airfoil that we sketch from the top plane. So I'm going to go to Construct, Plane at Angle, and I'm going to select this one. And again, because this is flat, we can leave this at zero degrees. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to create a new sketch 
on top of this new plane. Okay, and the first thing, like always, we will project our chord line. Okay, so now that I know that uh, my airfoil is going to be symmetrical, all I really need to do is just draw half of an airfoil and then mirror it. Again, if you know the exact airfoil that you need, go ahead and import that onto the plane as a canvas. So create spline control point spline. I'm just going to draw a relatively simple airfoil over there. So that's good enough. I'm going to go to mirror and I'm going to say object is going to be our blue line, which is the airfoil and the mirror is going to be our chord line, which is the reference. And we're going to press OK. Good, so we have our airfoil ready. And now we can finish the sketch because we're done with the airfoil. Now we want to create the path for this airfoil to be swept on. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the right plane. And now we're just going to follow what that vertical fin is doing. So I'm going to grab the line, go to the trailing edge, but I can't click on it because we haven't projected it yet. So as always, I'm going to press P to project, and I want to project that chord line. So if selecting things is becoming harder again, just make sure that you um, hide some of these bodies so that you can select it easier. So again, I just want to select that chord line of the airfoil that we just created. Press OK. And now you can see that if I press the line tool and I click on this, it will snap to it. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to just follow it all the way till there. OK, I want to do a similar thing for the front part. So I'm going to go to the leading edge grab that line and take it somewhere there and from here to again making sure that this is at the same level I'm going to select that there okay again because this are now two sharp lines we don't really want that so we can just add a fillet over here and press finish sketch perfect so we now have our airfoil which is a cross section we want to sweep and we also have the path so create, sweep, and again, we want the type to be path plus guide rail. And the profile is going to be our airfoil section. The path is going to be either of these, doesn't matter in this case. So that's the path, and this could be your guide rail, and we're good. Again, if it's doing something funny like this, make sure that your extent is full extent. And you can press OK. And we should have a perfectly good looking vertical stabilizer. Okay, so now I'm going to hide that sketch because we don't need it anymore. And there we have it. So at this point, you might be wondering, okay, well, if we're done with most of our bits of the aircraft, why does my aircraft still not look like a 737? Um, some of you may think it already does, some of you may think it doesn't yet, and that's still completely okay. If I show you this aircraft right here that we've just made with the main bits and there's no detail and I show you one that has detail, you can easily tell this looks more like a 737. And the reason is because we added detail not only to the wing section, but also to the cockpit section. And the moment you add detail to the cockpit section, it starts looking more and more like the aircraft that you are actually trying to design. At least that's how I see it. So. We're done with the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer. And just to sort of finish it off, what I'm going to do is add our wing tips on both the horizontal stabilizer and our vertical stabilizer. Okay, so similar to what we did for the wing, we first want to make sure that our horizontal stabilizer ends as a vertical. And the way to do that again is to create a new plane parallel to the plane of axis, plane of symmetry, and just offset this plane all the way to there. Okay, so that's good. So now if we go ahead and modify split body, and the body we want to split is the horizontal stabilizer, and the splitting tool is the new tool, is the new plane that we've just created, and we press OK, it's going to create these two different bodies. So body 18 is the new body that's just created, and body 16 was our horizontal stabilizer. Okay, so I'm just going to remove body 18 because we don't need that anymore. And I'm also going to hide the construction plane that we just created because we don't need that anymore either. Okay, so again, similar to what we did for the wing, I'm going to create a new sketch on top of this, uh, on top of the tip. 
of the horizontal stabilizer. So I'm going to press P and I'm going to make sure that I've clicked on specified entities and just the airfoil section we want to project. I'm going to grab the line tool and again going from the leading edge to the trailing edge we have ourselves a chord. So we're going to finish the sketch and now similar to what we did for the wing we are going to create a plane at an angle and the reference is our chord line. And again, remembering that the angle we chose for the dihedral of the entire horizontal stabilizer was minus 6.5. So minus 6.5. And therefore, there we go. So our plane is now aligned with the rest of the stabilizer. Okay, next we want to create a sketch on top of the new plane that we've just created. And once again, before we do anything, we want to make sure we project the chord line. I think we've done this enough to know that every time we start a new sketch, the first thing we want to project is the chord line. Okay, we press OK. Now, once again, what we want to do is we want to try and follow what the um, elevator, the horizontal stabilizer is doing. Okay, so control point spline, or you can just use a line, and I'm going to project this somewhere there. Or could even try to do something like this. Again, it completely depends what what style you want this to be at. Now, there's a potential probability that this is going to end with an error, but let's try it out. So create. So under surface, we want to create loft, making sure nothing is selected. The first thing we want to select is our profile at the end, so which is the half of the profile. The second profile is this one, and the third profile is that one. And when we press OK, this should give us a pretty decent um, wing tip. So, OK, and once again, because this is a surface, what we want to do is I'm just going to hide this body and turn this one into a solid. So similar to what we did before, we are going to go to the surface, go to patch, and patch this one up, press OK. And we're just we're going to stitch the two surfaces that we have here, press OK, and this turns it into a body. So now we've got three bodies that are not named. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and name them now. So I'm going to say horizontal, so H stabilizer. Okay, so in some cases, again, similar to the wing, some shapes might give you um, a lofting error. And in that case, again, you want to troubleshoot by trying out different lengths of the airfoil that you make at the end. Okay, and once again, if you do have a problem with that, do leave a comment. If you want, I'll just make a separate video for it. But first, try and do it yourself because every case is different. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing for the vertical stabilizer. So at this point, I probably don't have to say anything, but I'll say it anyways. We're going to create a new sketch on top of the end of the surface. We are going to project the airfoil, press OK, and we, then we're going to create a line from the leading edge to the trailing edge. OK, and then we're going to press finish sketch. Then we're going to construct plane at an angle using the chord as a reference. And in this case, we actually want this to be 90 degrees. So that's the plane that we want to sketch on. Of course, this is the same thing as saying I want to sketch on the right plane because they, they both are equivalent in this particular case because we drew it at the line of symmetry. Okay, so we're going to create a new sketch over here. And I'm going to, once again, as always, project the chord line. Press OK and create spline, control point spline, do this, and something like that. So I'm just going to make sure that this ends at the chord, and we have a closed surface again. So I'm going to finish the sketch, and hopefully this should not give us an error. This potentially might, and if it does, it might actually be a good thing so I can show you how to fix it. But in general, if this does give an error, the solution is to basically reduce this, reduce the height of um, the section that we've just drawn. So let's see what happens. Create loft. That's the first selection, second selection, and third selection. Okay, so that did a good job either. 
that did a good job. It's fine. Press OK. And once again, we want to hide our V stabilizer so that we can convert this new surface that we've created into a solid body. So I'm going to close that edge there and stitch the two surfaces. Press OK. And we have a solid body. So this is going to be V stabilizer tip. There we go. Perfect. So now we have everything smooth. There are no pointy ends anymore. So this should do the trick. And obviously, if you already mirror this, you'll see that it looks really, really cool already. So if you press on mirror, the type should be bodies and the objects you want to select are your horizontal stabilizer, your horizontal stabilizer tip, your vert, and your wing, and your wing tip. And if you select the mirror plane as the right plane, you can see that this already looks like an aircraft, which is pretty, pretty cool. So just a note again, if you think this looks like a generic aircraft right now, I do not blame you. Once we start adding more details, it'll start looking more and more like the aircraft that you want to design. Okay, so in the next section, we'll be working on more details. So we'll focus on how to make the cockpit and how to add the windows and also the doors. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments to make, please do make sure you write them down below. If there are any different ways you would have done uh, what I've showed you over here, please leave that as well. It might help other people uh, follow along what's happening. And if you'd like to support, please do like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.